。祖国完全统一的历史任务一定要实现，也一定能够实现。Taiwan is conducting its largest ever military drills, which simulate the repulsion of an invading force. It's just one of the many data points showing Beijing is preparing for war with Taiwan while we deal with arming Ukraine and inflation. Well, the communists are watching and plotting. A potential visit to Taiwan by the U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is becoming a problem for President Joe Biden's administration. Beijing, which claims sovereignty over the island, has already issued harsh warnings, even suggesting a possible military response. Hi, everybody. In the past one week, the U.S.-China tensions reached peak levels, and it sent shockwaves all across the world. Concerning the face-off of two of the most powerful military forces in the world, and the reason for this tension was the Asia visit of Miss Nancy Pelosi. She is the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives and was about to be the highest-ranking U.S. official to visit Taiwan since 1997. And this visit plan itself has enraged the dragon so much that Xi Jinping outright warned President Biden military drills were being conducted by China and Taiwanese army, and the situation is so intense. That every single media house is keeping an eye on this matter because this scenario could, within a blink of an eye, escalate to a World War III situation itself. Speculation around a possible trip to Taiwan by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has triggered another warning from China. CNN reporting that Speaker Pelosi is expected to visit Taiwan, citing unnamed Taiwanese and U.S. officials down in D.C. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is kicking off a closely watched trip to Asia, and the big question is. Whether she will visit Taiwan, that is a prospect that has rattled nerves in Washington and Beijing. So, in this recap episode, let's try to understand, in spite of Taiwan being a different country with its own army, with its own government and a flag, why does China still consider Taiwan to be a part of its mainland? What is so special about this tiny island that Chinese are willing to wage a war against the American military itself? And most importantly, what are the study materials to help you understand the U.S.-China tensions about the island of Taiwan? But before we dive into this detailed episode, I want to quickly thank our partners for this episode, and that is AT Money. You know, most of the people that I know use a simple shortcut to invest in mutual funds. They look at the top five-star rated funds with good returns and invest in them right away. But you know, there's a slight problem over here. The problem is that the top funds actually keep changing every single year. So if you look at the last 15 year data, you will see that if you had kept jumping to each top fund every year, your overall returns would be around 14%, which would just beat the Sensex returns of 13.5%, which further reduces after paying taxes on short term capital gains every year. But here's where AT Money Genius comes in. It's a membership that gives you different mutual fund portfolios that helps you invest in a mix of index funds of large cap, mid cap, small cap, international, along with debt and gold index funds. These portfolios, on the basis of the market conditions like inflation and interest rates, chain the mix in such a way that you can earn better returns in all market conditions. Fun fact is that if you had invested in Genius High Growth Mutual Fund portfolio for any seven years in the last 15 years. You would have earned an annual return of 16.1%. So, if this sounds useful to you, use the special link in the description and download the ET Money app now. This is a story that dates back to 1945. During that time, the World War II had just ended, and the Japanese had surrendered and given up control over China. And after the nightmare of the Japanese rule, the Republic of China officially began ruling Taiwan with the consent of its allies, which were the US and the UK. And even historically. Taiwan was a part of China since the 17th century, but in the next five years, a massive civil war broke out in China, and the then leader Jiang Kai-shek's troops were beaten by the communist leader Mao Zedong. This is when Jiang Kai-shek and his remaining people fled to Taiwan in 1949. This group then independently started ruling Taiwan and dominated the Taiwanese politics for the next 50 years until the year 2000. This is when finally democracy was established in Taiwan. And this history is the reason why China, by default, considers Taiwan to be a part of the Chinese mainland. So the question is: Just because a leader considers it to be a part of the mainland, why would they invade, right? Putin also essentially laid claim to Ukraine. After weeks of warnings, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has begun.、But、this is about more than tanks and troops and artillery. This is about power. You get the point, right? This is the reason why the world considers the Chinese invasion of Taiwan very, very seriously. But this is not it. China is so serious about this that in 
they came out with something called the anti secession law and in this law there are three sentences that make it very very clear that china wants taiwan by hook or crook and these are the three sentences taiwan is a part of china and the state shall never allow the taiwan independent secessionist forces to make taiwan secede from china under any name or by any means number 2 Solving the Taiwan question and achieving national reunification is China's internal affair which subjects to no interference by any outside forces and it even says that if Taiwan declares independence China shall employ non peaceful means and other necessary measures to protect China's sovereignty and territorial integrity so now the question over here is this law was made in 2005 right it's been 16 years now So why is this a concern for the world now? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is because China's military strength has grown exponentially in the past 30 years. Secondly, China has already started flying its planes near Taiwan. Reuters actually made this beautiful easy to understand visual of how China has constantly been crossing the lines. If you see this, this is the median line of Taiwan as in it is supposed to be Taiwan's territory and military planes are not supposed to enter this space without their permission. But you see these red lines This is the Chinese military frequently crossing this line not once not twice but hundreds of times in the past few years and this frequency has only been increasing with time but now the question over here is Taiwan is such a small country right and if you compare both their armies China has 10 times more ground force 8 times more naval destroyers and 30 times more submarines then why didn't China attack Taiwan till now Well that is because Taiwan has been backed by none other than the United States itself. When President Biden was asked if he would come to rescue Taiwan if China attacked, Biden openly said yes and yes and stated that America has a commitment to do that. And that kind of upset China. So if China attacks Taiwan according to President Biden, the US will intervene, which means what? We could be looking at a military war between two of the most powerful nations in the world and more importantly two nuclear superpowers will be head to head in what could perhaps escalate to world war 3 itself this is the backing that taiwan has now this begs the question what is so special about this little island called taiwan that the united states of america itself is willing to take such a big risk to go head on with china the first reason for this is something called the south china sea dispute and this is one of the most critical reasons why china would invade taiwan To tell you about it, South China Sea is this region in the world map where you have Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan and Vietnam. And this is by far one of the most important regions in the world. Why? Because 30% of the entire world's shipping passes through this region and it amounts to 3.37 trillion dollars in trade every single year. And as far as the strategic resources are concerned, according to the Council on Foreign Relations, the sea is estimated to have 11 billion barrels of untapped oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. And the most vital benefit of all is that the country controlling this maritime route will have natural military advantage over the rest of the world, including the United States. And China is so keen on taking control of this region that they have placed military ships, conducted military drills and even built artificial islands. Yes, you heard that right. China has literally built artificial islands to claim the South China Sea. And in our context, if China attacks Taiwan, if it wins, it will have an insane upper hand over the second most important region in the world. And this region gives them more control over a plethora of resources. a strategic military advantage and most importantly dominance over this 3 trillion dollar trade route secondly for the us it is a question of reputation and safety reputation because if the us does not defend taiwan then the rest of the countries that the united states has signed a defense pact with like japan and other countries including the nato allies will be extremely offended and thirdly we have the critical aspect of the semiconductor crisis and a giant taiwanese company called tsmc for those who don't know Semiconductors are by far one of the most important components in the world. This is because they are used in almost every single gadget that you use, starting from your mobile phone to your oven to your lights to even your automobiles. And fun fact is that if you look at the market share of the semiconductor contractors all across the world, you will see that while China stands at 6%, South Korean manufacturers stand at 17%, rest of the world stands at 13%. Taiwan alone has a market share of 63% and in that also TSMC alone commands a market share of 54%. It's the world's largest foundry that counts major technology firms such as Apple, Qualcomm and Nvidia. 
and all the major car makers around the world including Volkswagen, Ford Motors and Toyota Motors are super dependent on Taiwan for its semiconductors. Furthermore, replicating the manufacturing of semiconductors is an extremely costly, tedious and time consuming process that involves thousands of complicated procedures. And if you remember from our semiconductor episode, I said that the world is dangerously dependent on Taiwan for semiconductors. Why? Because this is what happened in 2020. Massive worldwide chip shortage. Earnings being cut by up to $2 billion. We don't have these chips, we're in trouble. There's a lot of reasons why this is happening right now. We still expect that through 2023, that we're still gonna be facing a supply shortage. This is the reason why the United States is extremely concerned about Taiwan and takes its commitment to protect it very, very seriously. Like I said, not because human beings are in trouble, but because there is a rival superpower that might rise to power. This is the reason why the entire world is extremely worried about the China-Taiwan conflict. And even the slightest miscalculation can escalate this to a World War III itself. Furthermore, because the world is already suffering due to the Russia-Ukraine war, if this war happens now, it would be a nightmare for the world economy itself. And this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that is, how will this China-Taiwan scenario affect India and what are the study materials to help you dig deeper into this conflict? Moving on, the first thing you need to understand is that India is an ally of both US and Taiwan. And regardless of whether China attacks Taiwan or takes it peacefully, it could be a disaster both for India and the world itself. Disaster for India because just like the Chinese vendors started abusing their monopoly position to increase the price of solar components, they are more likely to do the same with the semiconductors and that could hit us very, very hard. Secondly, if a war breaks out, the US is more likely to pressurize India because we are the closest allies they have to China and we might be forced to go to war. This is because during such critical times, the United States often puts forth a condition saying that if you don't support us, you are by default against us and that could put us in a catch-22 situation. So all we can hope for is that all of these wars settle down and we never come to this situation. Moving on to the study materials, the first thing you need to study about is how has China played games with the solar component supply and how much India needs to up its game with the semiconductors. For this, I am attaching the link to our old video and a few documents to help you understand this concept better. Secondly, I am attaching the link to a Reuters investigation report which actually made a scenario study of what all could happen if the invasion of Taiwan happens and how the forces of the world would engage in warfare. Read through it and you will understand how international relations and power works. And lastly, I am attaching a document written by an expert that actually talks about the war plans of China and digs deep into the intricacies of their military operation. So if you are a military operation or a strategy enthusiast, do have a look at them. I think you guys will love it. So go through all these documents and do let me know what you think about in the comment section. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.